At Corny and Lynn Lawyers, we have a vision to provide advice and solutions that will deliver just, redemptive and restoring outcomes. Each of our lawyers believes in the call on their lives to contribute to the fabric of this world through strategic counsel, courageous advocacy and clear documentation. This leads to just, redemptive outcomes. Good afternoon, my name is Andrew Lind and from <laughs> Lawyers and welcome to our webinar today on Testamentary Discretionary Trusts or TDTs in Estate Planning. By way of introduction, uh, Corning and Lind Lawyers is a, a medium sized law firm. Uh, there's about uh, 23 of us now when we're sitting around the morning tea table. Uh, we have six focus areas um, including skills and education, not for profit and charity law, commercial law and property law, employment discrimination, family law and um, the category that this presentation today fits within, uh, estate and elder law. Um, the other things on that screen you can uh, read at your leisure, um, but uh, certainly uh, we're willing to travel to wherever our clients need us. All right, I want to talk first of all about what a typical will structure uh, might look like uh, for a couple. Uh, generally, I think of a will structure in two levels, level one and level two. Level one being what might occur uh, with your estate if one of the partners uh, to the relationship uh, passes away. And generally in that circumstance, uh, when a spouse survives, the whole of the estate goes to the spouse who is the sole executor of the estate. Then we normally in a typical will deal with, well, what happens if both of the spouses, um, both of the uh, people to the relationship have passed away, what happens uh, to the estate and we typically talk about that as level two and if there are children to the relationship usually the children to the relationship would take an equal shares um, the net benefit of the estate with a gift over to grandchildren so that they stand in their parents shoes. So t that's what a typical will structure uh, would look like. The next question is, well, why not keep it simple? Why not, why not just um, adopt a, a very simple will? Um, and look, that's a really good question and one that needs to be asked because it's not always the case that sophisticated um, estate planning and will making should be used. Um, in many cases, a simple will uh, will do the job. Um, and do the job cost effectively. The key though, however, is to have an up-to-date will, even if it, even if it be a simple will, have it in place. Uh, let your executors know uh, where it is um, and uh, make sure that it represents your current circumstances. Uh, about 50 percent of the Australian population currently don't have an up-to-date will. Really important to have one. But why wouldn't we keep it simple? Well, there are a few reasons. One is um, I'm going to put under the a couple. I'm going to put under the heading of asset protection. And then I'm also going to make some uh, comments under the heading tax because there are some real asset protection and tax benefits in not keeping it simple, in using a more sophisticated will structure with these testamentary discretionary trusts. Under asset protection, your spouse might have high occupational risk. They might be a surgeon or a lawyer or uh, someone else who, um, in relation to their vocation, there are some real personal liabilities that can attach to that and therefore, and you've done a whole lot of work during your lifetime to structure your affairs so that the family home is not held in that person's name, so that other assets that are building in value are held uh, in trusts or whatever it might be. And the, what I see time and time again is a lot of that hard work being unravelled uh, at the time of death of one of the spouses where the, some of the key assets that are held in the low risk partner's name move to the high risk part and so you start to um, torpedo all that hard work that you've done in asset protection. Additionally, you can use a more sophisticated will structure with testamentary discretionary trust to, to guard the uh, family wealth against relationship failure in level, in level two, uh, that is relationship breakdown uh, between children and your estate not being dragged into um, that relationship failure as part of the uh, matrimonial property pool. 
Um, additionally, these structures um, sometimes al allow us, depending on the size of the estate, to introduce some mechanisms around shared control of trust assets um, or at least um, um, a, 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 an older, wiser person being um, one of the decision makers in relation to the trust assets to seek to pass on wisdom uh, to the next generation in relation to how wealth is dealt with. So there's some asset protection reasons, there's some tax reasons. Um, generally, uh, death is a revenue neutral um, event, that is that the movement of assets on the death of a person pursuant to their will does not usually create a stamp duty or capital gains tax um, event. Uh, so it is an opportunity to restructure asset holdings without uh, revenue consequences. Um, there are also the other big ticket uh, benefit of using testamentary discretionary trusts is that children are treated as adults for tax purposes. That is the key, uh, uh, one of the key advantages of using testamentary discretionary trusts, and I'll unpack that in some detail in this presentation. So much so that these trusts are sometimes called trusts to die for because you can only get them by dying. All right, TDTs, what are they? Um, testamentary discretionary trust. It's testamentary because it's established via a testamentary instrument, that is a will or a codicil. It's discretionary because it, um, they usually provide the trustee with discretion about which beneficiaries of the trust receive the income or the capital. Um, and they're called a trust, of course, because the trustee holds the property, which could be a share of your estate, um, and the fruit of that property, that is its net income, for the benefit of the beneficiaries that are named uh, in the trust instrument which is embedded in your will.